March 18th of this year, we celebrate the fifth Sunday of Lent. One of the key themes of Lent is the idea of covenant. And in fact, some would say this is the key to understand the Bible. The Bible is a covenant story about a God who is a covenant maker, a God who desires to be in relationship with us, and more than in relationship, a God who wants to be one with us. A covenant is different than a contract. A contract is an exchange of goods or services. A covenant is an exchange of persons and lives. So you think of a bride and a groom on their wedding day where they say to each other, I will be yours and you will be mine. That's what God's desire is, and we see it all over the Hebrew Scriptures, and we see it ratified in the person of Jesus Christ. So let's go to today's first reading from the prophet Jeremiah. Jeremiah restates for us the words of God as God states God's desire for us. Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 31. The days are coming when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel. I will place my law within them and write it upon their hearts. I will be their God and they shall be my people. It's a great promise of God who simply wants to be with us and in fact be in us. Now from that promise of Jeremiah, flash forward six centuries. Go to the upper room as Jesus is with his disciples ready to celebrate the Passover. Jesus lifts up the cup of blessing and he says the words that we hear at every Mass. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Jesus now is accomplishing what God said through Jeremiah all those centuries earlier. Now Jesus wants to write himself into our heart and into our life. Jesus is the Word made flesh. Jesus is the law incarnate. And now he wants to write that law in us. So think about when you approach the Eucharist this weekend, when you approach the cup of salvation, or when you approach the bread of life, Jesus literally is placing himself and his life and his covenant inside of you. At the Eucharist, the two become one. Again, think of a marriage. The two bodies become one life in some way because God has poured divine life into us. And now think about every sacrament that we celebrate. The two become one, that's God's desire. Very briefly, let's move to the Gospel. Some Greeks had come to worship for the Passover, and they said to Philip, Sir, we would like to see Jesus. The Greek term to see Jesus means to follow Jesus. They want to be followers of Jesus. And how does Jesus respond to them? Very peculiar. Here's his response. Amen, amen, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. How is following Jesus related to a grain of wheat falling to the ground and dying? That's the pattern of discipleship. We must learn to die to ourselves so that Christ may raise his new life within us. That's the covenant we celebrate.